and welcome back to the Perth to Paisley podcast, episode number 161, where Hearts did not make history by beating Rangers at Hamden for the first time ever, getting into the Scottish Cup final and just having a lovely day. No, of course, it didn't happen. To talk about that, to talk about the mental semi-final that happened the day before, all things Scottish Cup and Heart of Midlothian, I am Danny McIver, and as ever, I'm joined by the, as you can see on his face, if you're watching this on YouTube, the ever-jubilant Adam Kennedy. Adam, how are you? All right. How are you? (laughs) I think I'm in a better mood than you are. There's no point in lying, is there? (laughs) I've been better, been better, been worse. Absolutely fair. So, let's see how Adam's mood goes throughout this do, do you know what? Sorry, before we get into this episode, I actually told myself today, I thought maybe the dust has settled, I might enter it more calm, look at things more rationally, and then I just thought, what's, what's the point? Like, I'm as well just giving my, my genuine, honest thoughts, yeah. and just, it's a, it's a good form of therapy to just rant and rave about what could or couldn't have been so yeah it's it's shite but it's a feeling that we've become all too accustomed to over the years sadly yeah that's very fair so we are going to dissect all things scottish cup but until we get to our half we've got the previous half which was definitely the more entertaining half of the scottish cup semi-finals as aberdeen and celtic played at hamden the day before on Saturday, half 12 kickoff, and what I think a lot of people expected to just be a very run of the mill dominant Celtic performance. Believe Adam's put his hand up. Yeah, I was the same. I think everybody that. was. I think most Aberdeen fans going were thinking the exact same <laughs> thing. However, no, a mental game with Aberdeen opening the scoring inside two minutes, Celtic clawing it back, going An early ahead. goal against the old firm. That must be lovely. What a novelty must, that is. Must be great, that. Well, in fairness, we did that this season, then fucked it. Much like Aberdeen did. Yeah. Um, oh, Celtic. Yeah, you're only poking the bear otherwise, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Celtic go ahead. However, in the 90th minute, Aberdeen equalised, take it to extra time. Then Celtic get their goal in amongst it and you're thinking right that's it they then literally a glitched FM situation where the exact same goal happened twice in the 120th yeah, I didn't, minute I didn't think about that Aberdeen equalised through the same way and then an absolutely batshit penalty shootout happened with goalkeepers taking penalties goalkeepers going down hurt big misses however Celtic eventually get through 6-5 on pens what did you think of the other semi-final? Um, well, I was working early Saturday morning, um, so decided to take a nap. And I thought, I'll get up around two, maybe quarter past two, half two or whatever for the, for the scores, the Saturday scores, um, at three o'clock Saturday at three, best time of the week. Um, however, uh, I expected fully to wake up from my nap and just see a routine Celtic victory or en route to the Scottish Cup final. I thought maybe two, three nil, not really break a yeah. sweat. Um, obviously woke up, saw that the scoreline was 2-1 Celtic and saw that Aberdeen had taken the lead and thought, wow, that's quite something. That might actually be an all right game. Decided to switch it on uh, and what a great decision that proved to be. <laughs> um, it's just a mental game of football, a really great advert for Scottish football, yeah. um, which the Sunday wasn't, as we'll, we'll no doubt come to. Um, but I can't... I'm not sure I should say this. I kind of feel for Aberdeen, given that they put so much into that game. It felt but like it, our COVID Cup final against Celtic. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah. Three each and again ends yeah. on penalties the, the cruelest way. Um, obviously that was different, and you know we actually could have won it. But yeah, uh, yeah Aberdeen. I've still, I've still never seen Aberdeen win the Scottish Cup in my lifetime. Yeah. You haven't either. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, in that respect, it is quite funny that they go beat. Um, and obviously, we'd all, we'd all have the fear come May the 25th of them playing Rangers in a final at Hamden and potentially stealing uh, our possible Euro jackpot. So, all things considered, it, it actually went probably as well as we could hope for as a neutral yeah. and onlookers for potential opponents in a final. Um, the penalty shootout, though, I, I want to speak about probably more so than than the game um, because, as you say, the two Aberdeen goals were carbon copies of one another. Celtic yeah. are possibly 
the smallest Celtic team I can ever remember. Yeah. Um, and again, like, it just makes sense to stick your centre half up front and just go yeah. for the jugular when you're when you're running out of time. Uh, but the penalty shootout was like nothing I have ever seen. I can recall a goalkeeper getting cramp in my 20 years of watching football once. When? And I, I can't even and, remember it. That was Kepa Arita Balaga at Wembley oh, for Chelsea. God. Of course. And Maurizio Sarri. And he refuses that, to go off. Yeah, yeah. That's the only time in two decades of watching football I can ever record a, a, a goalkeeper having cramp. In fairness, I can't I can, I don't think if that's your one example, then that's fair because I was going to say I can never remember it happening physically during the penalties. Because oh, Kepa was before no, it, eh? it was an extra it, time. Yeah, yeah, it was an extra time. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. To do it in a penalty shootout penalty. is crazy. Keller Ross was arguably one of Aberdeen's best players last season. Yeah. The drop-off from last to this is incredible. To then have the audacity to do that during the midst of the shootout, I'm convinced it's trying to pull off some sort of mind games. I don't think he the, legitimately had thing, crap. Right? But it was to the detriment of his own player. Yeah, so I I think he did have cramp, but he's just a fucking idiot. Because <laughs> I have no issue with him going down and needing treatment in the sense of like, well, yeah, if he needs treatment and he is hurt and like whatever. But well, get out of the way. Yeah, you know that your player... By the way, it's not like it's just Bojan Majowski. It's a youngster. Thank you. Up. Ryan Duncan has had a couple loan spells out from Aberdeen. The whole time, I'm thinking to myself, this is cruel on the young lad because yes. he's going to be overthinking the situation. It's easy to say this in hindsight, McIver, but uh, the, the pair of us, I would have wagered a month's wage that he was going to miss that pen. Yes. I even said it. Yes. I was watching it with my sister's boyfriend, my missus, whoever. I said, he's missing this. Yeah, it was nailed uh, on. Uh, absolute certainty. He's got more time than the rest of the penalty takers had combined in that shootout to think, probably change his mind. Yep. And the whole time I'm thinking, why would one of the senior pros, like I know Graham Shinney was suspended, he'd yeah. maybe be like your prime case. But I'm thinking, what are the senior pros? Why not bail the young lad yeah. out yeah, and exactly. just go, do you know what, Ryan? You wait. You be the next penalty. I'll take yeah. this. I'll try and defuse the situation. But no, instead, gutless, and you, you let the young lad take it and invariably miss. However, I felt for him missing. I did not feel for Charles Joseph John Hart missing. A goalkeeper taking a penalty in our Scottish Cup semi-final. He thinks he's Ederson. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I thought, you cocky prick. I Literally, I was begging that he missed that. Yeah. And I thought, get that right round you. I, I, I mean, I don't know if it's just because he's retiring at the end of the season that he just thinks it's a jolly and thinks, ah, you know what? I've, I've had I think he wanted it, it. It was like, if I score this, it guarantees that my last game is the Scottish Cup final in my career. So but, I want to be known as the guy that yeah, got us that there. That sends them there. Yeah. Which Bell he still end. is because he, like, the penalty's missed. But Bell end. I'm not, thing, I'm not having it, McIver. A goalkeeper. Oh, I agree. A, I agree with you, no, yeah. Like, you'd be mortified as one of his teammates. Yeah. I think. The, the goalie has gone ahead of you in the penalty shootout. Because the next penalty was Alistair Johnson, whose penalty was class. It was really... They had better pens after his. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it was as well. Awata's yeah, was amazing. I'm, I couldn't believe what I was thinking. Like, I was watching it in disbelief. I thought, get that right around you, because everybody knows I'm not a, a Joe Hart fan anyway. Um, the final thing on that Rose thing, by the way, I saw some people be like, it doesn't matter the situation, it's disgusting if you are trying to do it as a tactic. I would be... See, if I was an Aberdeen fan, right? God help me. But if I was an Aberdeen <laughs> fan, I'd be sat going, right, we're taking it next. Rose, just get up and hobble out of the box let them take whoever it is take it yeah and just let it enter their conscious yeah and then go right i really need treatment here i yeah. need to be sad <laughs> and then make the celtic player uh, yeah wait like that, for that yeah. duration that ryan duncan waited yeah yeah there's an it's oh, like out, the, the worst part of it is there's an easy way to make it benefit your team but you didn't 
I think then another Aberdeen teenager is it Jack Milne. I think yeah. he then took one after Ryan, and I thought, yeah. fair play. That's his ballsy. penalty was really good as well. It was, and then it just oh, whatever happens happens, and Joe Hart's made to look the hero, even though he could have potentially cost Celtic. So, so that was annoying. Um, but I guess the one consolation was again not knowing what would happen on the Sunday. That's. Pretty much European football yes, secured. You is. think third's done anyway. We yeah. can secure that Saturday. We'll come to that. I don't think we will. Um, but we could. <laughs> um yeah. I yeah. I, I I've I was pleased with Saturday's events before Sunday happened. Well, Sunday did happen as Hearts and Rangers travelled through to Hamden for a three o'clock kickoff in the Scottish Cup semi-final, and Stephen Naismith probably, at least to me, surprised a few people with oh, his team selection. Obviously, last week, me and you spoke about how we assumed he would go to the three slash five at the back, mm-hmm. play with two up top, one fast guy in behind Shanko, and I think the majority of people seem to feel he would do that. However, Naismith does what Naismith does and went, no, no, I'm going to flip reverse it on everybody. Went with the back four, but not only went with a back four, went with a different back four than what most people would predict. Can I say, had you offered me that Stephen Aceworth would go with the back four, I'd be thinking, brilliant, that's fine. I, I've, got, I've got absolutely no qualms with that. I'd have done exactly the same thing. That's fantastic. It then comes to the personnel selected in said back four, and I totally changed my opinion. So, there were three changes to the week's previous result against Livingston as Alex Cochran, the most surprising omission from the squad, Yutaro Oda and Barry Mackay all made way as Hearts lined up with Craig Gordon in goals, a back four of Stephen Kingsley at left back, Natty Atkinson at right back and two centre-halves of Frankie Kent and Kai Rolls, Cammy Devlin and Benny Beningamy as the double pivot, with a three of Kenny Vargas, George Grant, and Alan Forrest just behind Lawrence Shankland. Now, listen, it's become a meme and a bit on this podcast that I fancy Alex Cochran, right? I love him. Don't we all? Love him to pieces. So I'm obviously aggrieved that he wasn't starting and felt it was poor tactically. Naismith then explained after the game that the decision was purely tactical on his fucking birthday, I, I was going to say, I'm glad you said that because I, I didn't see that from the gaffer post. So, so I'm glad that you've clarified this. And the justification given was that Stephen Kingsley is better from dead ball scenarios. So as a result, he felt that it was better to have Stephen Kingsley in the park rather than Alex Cochran. I think he thinks that Stephen Kingsley is a better defender and that's why he chose Alex Cochran personally. But I think Stephen Naismith doesn't I, I think, think Alex Cochran is that. as good as Stephen Kingsley, which blows my fucking mind because of Cochrane being missing it in numerous games this season for no discernible reason. And I just think it's like, yep, Cochrane's away in the summer and Naismith's going, no, I'm going to play with players I've got here. I, I'm glad you said that because I had various conversations with people at the pub after the game and lots of people said, have you heard anything regarding Alex Cochrane? I found his omission very surprising. What What have you heard? I've heard absolutely nothing. My assumption is that he's off. Yeah. That that is the, the only logical solution that I can see that Alex Cochran did not start that game. That being said, we played a final merely a few seasons ago where John Souter had agreed a pre-contract with Rangers. He played in that cup final against Rangers and was Hart's best player yeah, on the Yeah, he was the best player in the park. By a million miles. Yeah. I don't understand that logic at all. Surely, to me, it would seem incredibly simple to play your best 11 in a cup semi-final, yep. the last remaining trophy that we are competing for. Yep. If Alex Cochran is not in Hart's best 11, then I don't know who is. Because yeah. to me, he's our second best outfield player behind Lauren Shankland. Fully, fully, obviously, I agree. And that, by the way, before people... Because, listen, I want to get into a conversation about reactions to the weekend because I have oh, a very strong I, feelings I'm glad, about it. I'm glad we took a couple of days, put it this way. I, this, is, yeah. this is relatively calm for me so far. I, obviously, and Adam is the same, 
love Stephen Kingsley. This is not a dig at Stephen Kingsley. It's just that for me and for Adam, Alex Cochran is an all-round better footballer and better fit in this Hearts team at left back slash left wing back, if you want to say that, well, than say, Stephen if, Kingsley. If we're going gung ho, give me Alex Cochran over Stephen yeah. Kingsley every day of the week. I I do love Kingsley as I'm sure you do. Yeah. I, I, again, I just think there's something. I don't know if we've overthought it and thought that Abdallah Seema's coming back for Rangers. He scored against Hearts this season at Tyne Castle. Maybe we're looking to counter his threat. I just I just feel as though Naismith believes that Kingsley is a better defender than Cochrane. Hence his selection. But obviously then you lose that offensive impetus or offensive output. But to justify it with set pieces, I'm I'm not I'm not buying that, to be honest with you. Agreed. Very much agreed. However, regarding the rest of the team selection, what did you make of it? Uh, yeah, like I say, back four, happy with. Benny and Cammy Devlin, fine. Uh, George Grant, I've not been too much, big a fan of, but in recent weeks and performances has probably justified his selection. Forrest and Vargas I would have picked as the two on the flanks, uh, behind obviously the main man. So... Regard regarding the the selection overall, I was I was pretty content, bar obviously just finding the Alex Cochran omission really bizarre and harsh as you said on his birthday. Yeah, <laughs> I was then thinking, has Cochran been out last night? I saw so night? many people <laughs> saying that. Just, just been so out in the lash. Um, I, I don't know. Um, a, a strange one. Um, but ultimately, ten out of the eleven, I was pretty happy with. Yeah. I, that sounds terrible. That sounds like I've got no confidence in Stephen Kingsley. No, I, just, I know what you mean, I, though. I, I just, I, yeah. I, I, I love you, really, Stephen. Yeah. So we all arrive and we're thinking, right, it's a good team. Just don't do what we always do and have. <laughs> Let's a, get off to a fast start yeah, that have, I crave. We can a out. slow start that has become synonymous with this Hearts team. Second half Hearts is a thing for a reason. Can I say, sorry, McIver, I was also intrigued by the Rangers team that with Connor no Goldson Goldson. had been dropped. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, I think Leon Balogun is their best defender by a country mile. Um, and I, I heard Philippe Clement say that he was intending on leaving Connor Goldson out of the Dundee game at Dens in midweek. But again, that doesn't add up to me because just as I've said with Stephen Naismith, it's a cup semi-final. Rangers could only win two trophies of the three and, and are going for both cups because I think really the league is probably Celtics now. Yep. To me, I, and look, I know that loads of Rangers fans were delighted to see Conor Goldson dropped. I wasn't. Um, but I, 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 I was disappointed that ultimately they played their best team and we didn't really ever. So, yeah. Hey -ho. Very fair. And immediately it started going wrong. Uh, 91 seconds in, man, you were mentioning earlier, Seema crosses a ball oh, into Cyril Dessers, but it's hit over the bar, a very early warning. I was thinking, great, he's not got his shooting boots on today. <laughs> How wrong was I? Well, three minutes later, you were proved very wrong, as John Lundstrom plays a ball over the top. The man we were speaking about earlier, Stephen Kingsley, does not clear it well at all, just kind of chucks his body in front of it. It falls to James Tavenier, who gets to the ball ahead of Kai Rolls, who then, in a, oh, in a movement that is kind of both a tackle and a pass, gets the ball to Todd Cantwell, who finds Dessas in the box, and after four and a half minutes, Cyril Dessas has found the back of the net, as it is 1-0 Rangers. Now, I feel like you and me this season have kind of been a Cyril Dessers defender. We've actually thought he's been better than most people. I will I say... He's as bad as people make out. Yep, surrounding where I was... At the game, the main complaint was, how have we let that fucking useless idiot score against us? Whereas I'm like, that useless I think idiot's he's good. Got, got nearly 20 goals in all 19, competitions. Yep, yeah, exactly. Like, he's doing well, I however, the numbers. however, even a not very good player probably isn't going to miss from where he misses. And immediately, no. I saw Cami Devlin today speaking to Barry Anderson, and Devlin says, that's it, you just killed like your game yeah. plan is like oh, totally. thrown out the window. Completely. Totally. I, I, look, we we have to set the tempo. Yeah. 
I, I know I know where they're perceived underdogs, but Rangers, given the current form that they were in, you know, this is a side that had lost to Ross County the weekend before. It's a side that were held in a goalless draw against Dundee. I mean, Hearts have far superior resources to both Ross County and Dundee. So, with all due respect, like, if they can put up a fight against Rangers, as can we, folk will argue, yeah, Ross County are scrapping for their lives at the bottom of the Scottish Premiership. I'm sorry, this is a great opportunity for us to get into the Scottish Cup final. I'm not buying that. Same as Dundee virtually secured sixth play. Uh, I was going well, to say... A top six spot. The argument I would use is more both those clubs were at home on small, narrow Fair. pitches that they were able to kind of Fair, but, make everyone stuffy. But neither's... Ross County's need is greater. What am I trying to say here? I know what you mean generally. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a chance... For them, yeah. like it is for us. Yeah. And yet again, what is our problem with starting so slow? How have we not rectified this since the season kicked off in fucking August? Yeah. We're in April. We've looked at this run, or rather the run that we went on from what? Mid-November? Or no, mid-December. Yeah. To what? February? Yeah. So maybe start of March? And yes, it was fantastic. But there is still a continued annoyance of mine that we start games slowly. And I'm not being funny. It was enough of a mountain to climb from the get-go here. The fact that you go a goal down after, what, four, what did you say, four minutes, five minutes? Four and a half minutes. I mean, Jesus. Uh, yeah. Again, like the, the mental side. This is this is what I think we're, we're tapping into more and more these days is that is just the ultimate setback. And then there's probably characters within our squad that think, Jesus, well, the last time we played Rangers in Glasgow, we got absolutely smashed 5-0. Let's not hope it's a repeat here. Whereas you're still firmly in the game, even despite being one goal down. Yeah. Yes, it's not the ideal start. Yes, there are several players that are culpable here for this first goal. But the consolation that you take from conceding an early goal is it's not the last four minutes. Yeah. You've still then got bags of time to try and respond. Um, but that ultimately just did set the tone. I mean, that, as Cammy Devlin says, that killed our afternoon totally, yeah. that that start. Um, I'm not sure who who is the most culpable for this goal. What I will say is, Cyril Dessers appears to have taken the mantle from Alfredo Morelos, yeah. just choosing us as his favourite opponents. Yeah. Like, the guy gets absolutely slaughtered by most of the Scottish press week to week, but yet will still turn up against Hearts on a consistent basis. So the goal's really annoying. The time of the goal's really annoying. And the scorer of the goal is really annoying. I was really yeah. annoyed in the stands. I want to get your thoughts. Who do you think was culpable for the goal? I think it's both a combination of Kingsley and Rolls. I think Kingsley has way more time than he seems to think he does. He seems yeah. to think he needs to just clear it immediately. It's like, you could... There was no real pressure. You could have taken a touch and cleared it. And even then, he just throws the side of his body at it. It's really weird. It's a, it's a nervousness from the get-go. I don't know what we're yeah. nervous about. I don't know. But again, I don't know whether we read too much into records against... Like, the fact that we hadn't beaten Rangers at Hamden. The fact that... Our, I think our last win against them was in this competition. Was it the Bazanich goal? 1-0 at Tynecastle. I, I I'm remember. fairly certain that was our last win against Rangers. I can't remember. So, that was under Stendhal before coronavirus was even a thing. Like, this is... Why... It's so infuriating because I know that we can get the better of this Rangers team. We can. I wouldn't be surprised if we beat them at Tynecastle. I know, the most... The most pointless game ever. That'll be the one that we Not win. if it determines the league. That would be objectively the league, funny. The league, the league will be done by then. I know, but fuck it. Imagine if we stopped them win the league. That would be funny. But it's, it's annoying because I genuinely feel like this squad is capable. I think we're a couple tweaks away. But this was just... It was a golden chance. And... We've screwed it up after five minutes. Do you know how little a time five minutes actually is? <laughs> I spend longer in the bathroom. Not a long time at all. However, I'm interested from now because judging by social media over the last 48 hours, there almost seems to be like two camps from this game. And I have a feeling oh. we're in the different camps. Okay. 
because I think generally we played well on Sunday. I think for the majority of that game, we were the better team. But I, I, it was I, I, dictated by two chances. We didn't take our two chances and, and Rangers took theirs. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with your last statement. I, I thought for a spell in the second half, we were yep. definitely the better team. Yep. That like 20 minute period at the start. But, I, but I'd probably disagree and say that we played well. I thought it was a terrible game of football. I really did. I did not think Rangers were up to much. As you say, they no. took their chances where we, yeah. where we didn't. But we hardly carved out a lot either. Yeah, I, but I played I, well. I mean, like we had... We, like I think, like individuals can hold their heads up high and go, "I had a yeah. good performance today." Yeah, I, I, I go along with that. I also got in a discussion on on Saturday, and to me, the the game was won and lost in the midfield, in my opinion. Yeah, I thought yeah. Todd Cantwell was excellent. He was the best player in the park, and I thought that, or I have thought this for a while. Far too many of Hearts midfielders are the same type of player in winning the ball back. We've not got anybody. George Grant occasionally, when he can be asked to play that killer pass, I'm so excited for Jan Danda and Blair Spittle to yeah. come in and sign for Hearts because I genuinely believe that they are what we're crying out for. Both are decent, you know, depth options. I think Danda's probably the better player, but Blair yeah. Spittle's an excellent backup to to call upon, and they ultimately carry. They they. Create the transition from midfield to attack. We I also don't think have though, enough of that. I also think, though, tactically, we tried to avoid the midfield battle. Every single time we got the ball, we played it out wide because Rangers put three in the middle of the park. Don't get me wrong. I think that's because they're playing Dujon Sterling at left back, who's not a recognised left back, and everybody mouths off about James Tavernier's frailties yeah. defensively. I, I agree with that. I'm more than happy. for. I, 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 I virtually said it. Get the ball out wide to Forrest, Vargas, and just yeah. let them run at both fullbacks. I thought it might be Barisic for yeah. uh, Sterling. But Tavernier, if he could defend, wouldn't be at Rangers, simply put. So I, I've got no qualms with that. The problem is I, we just had no... It felt like whenever Rangers got the ball in the middle of the park, there was no one there. Right. The gaps were yeah. just far too were far huge. too big. Um However, again, I, I I don't know I don't know what the right answer is though because yeah. if you're playing a three in midfield, surely you'd think that between that trio they'd cover enough space. Yeah, potentially. And, yeah, and ultimately they did as well. So you could even go man to man and just have Benny and Devlin on Lundstrom and Diamande, or uh, you know it's interchangeable. Grant on Cantwell. Or I think whatever. the worry then would be from I imagine Nismith will be like. For ninety minutes, are we going to win our battles against that caliber of player? And who knows? We just I, won't know. We literally just yeah, won't now, know. Now we won't know. But yeah, I I, I don't know. I, I think I think Sunday exposed the frailties in our squad for me, to be honest. And I, and a large part of that is midfield. I could see exactly why two of our three supposed pre-contracts. I don't even think they're real, actually confirmed. <laughs> You're going to say, uh, I don't think they're real. I don't think we've actually done them. <laughs> no, they've not been confirmed officially by either club in either instance. So two of our alleged yeah. three pre-contract signings are in that same position to, to go and make things happen. I, I And again, there's a player that will come on to that I just, I think is... I, I don't know. I was going to say a square peg in a round hole, but I'm not even sure that that's entirely accurate either. I'm not sure what shape the peg is. I think the hole's round, but what shape peg he is, I, I'm struggling to to confirm. Well, I imagine it's the player I'm about to mention right now. As in the 12th minute, we started to actually do something. As from 30 yards, Kenny Vargas just hit a shot well wide of the post, but he got a shot off. So fair play to him. Don't know what he's trying. Let's just talk about him now. Kenneth Vargas, I absolutely adore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He is not a winger. And nobody, can, I don't know what he is, because his shooting is horrendous at points. So he's not a centre forward. I don't think he's a winger, because, again, I, I, I genuinely can't, I can't recall him crossing. I, I, I can recall <laughs> two points where he should cut it back. And neither happens. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know what he's supposed to be. I'll tell I, you what he is. 
I, I'll I tell think, you what he is. I think he's meant to be a Shankland replacement, but I don't think he is. But I, I, he is. But I would not hang my hat upon him to replace. Like it's going to be tough to replace Shankland's goals anyway, on the basis that he's off. But Kenneth Vargas is not the man to take that mantle. I'm so I don't think he is in terms of I don't think the club view him as that. I think the club view him as what he is, which is. A project player. A very young player with clearly a massive upside yeah. that we can hopefully benefit from either physically on the park or from monetarily. From a marketing perspective, yep, as can see. Exactly. <laughs> yep, or monetarily, either through marketing or through transfer <laughs> fees. I think it's through a transfer fee, yeah. as I would incline that he's performed semi-decent. I'm not yeah. asked about South American shirt sales and all that. Yeah, I didn't carry on. Please That'd perform in the park. Players. That would be class. I watched love- like mules, <laughs> and for some reason in Argentina they've got some as well, and he's just <laughs> spread all yeah, over. Yeah, exactly. It'll be class. There's the Maracana with eighty thousand, yeah, and so- like ten thousand. They're just in maroon white tops, class. or with eggs on the front of them. It'd be absolutely <laughs> amazing. But yeah, listen, Kenny Vargas was our. I think I said the Nadir on Twitter, where it was like. <laughs> Our forwards didn't perform well, and he was the nadir of them just going, fucking hell, Kenny, I think you couldn't have picked a worse time to have your worst game, probably, for Hearts. But simultaneously, I, the, the thing I've always said about Vargas is, I, I rate his work rate. It, yeah. he'll, always, he'll always put a shift in, he doesn't hide. I'm not necessarily sure that I could say the same about Alan Forrest. That might be harsh. I think that's harsh because I think that is what I think of when I think Alan Forrest. I just think a constant running. I didn't really see that at the weekend, though. I just, I don't, I don't know whether we were trying to go down Vargas's flank more. I think it was that. I think like we I were say, trying to Sterling out of position, and we're trying to yeah. exploit that, and maybe hope that Tavernier's sleeping at the back post yeah. for Alan Forrest to then come in and, and finish. Uh, the way that we've seen Borna Barisic do for yeah. Rangers uh, countless times. So well, here's a perfect example of it because 24 minutes in, Forrest does really well. He intercept a loose John, uh, John Lundstrom pass, drives forward, but his near shot post is then saved by Butland. The ensuing corner is then eventually. I'm not even sure side, I remember that, but I'll hold my hands up. I was intoxicated. Is eventually played back into the box by Shankland, and Kent nearly pokes it home past Butland, but Butland makes a good save with his feet. When you watch it back, you see, even if he had scored, it would have been disallowed because he's about a mile offside. But, in the ground, you don't think that. You that just think, moment. how has he not scored? <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, please don't talk to me about VAR, given what we saw from a Coventry City perspective oh, as I well. I think of a fucking Coventry afternoon. City. No, I think of a come fuck. on. I'm watching Ellis Sims like a proud dad. Oh yeah, I'm buzzing I'm for him. But I think of a fuck. I, I didn't really care about that. Him. Um, Rangers, five minutes later, appeal for a penalty against Alan Forrest, but it's never a penalty. Um, no. Speaking about VR, it's the quickest VR check fucking ever. <laughs> um, that was literally just a, a single look. No. Yeah, Move it's on. just like, no, it's not. On you go. Uh, 32 minutes in, Dessas breaks forward, passes the bottom of Tondo, who wins a free kick on the edge of the box. Uh, Tavernier's effort is well over the bar, though. Can I say something? Yep. <laughs> I was going to say Nathaniel Atkinson was really good. He I'm was. Not... No, that's good but, to say it. But Matondo, was. Matondo was poor. But yeah, but that doesn't uh, matter. But, but Atkinson did cope with the threat, and even you believe how good Atkinson was. Even Dexter Lembakisa coming on as they well. Both, the two uh, players uh, we were most worried about, I think, were two of our best we're performers fine. on the we're day. We're fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, it just, just goes to show what we know. Yeah, we know. Um, how dare we sit here and <laughs> criticise Nate Smith for not picking Cochrane? But uh, but Ravi Matondo was arguably Rangers' worst performer. And they're, they're yeah, trying to let, let, obviously, a, a lot go through him. I was pleased that Seema came off. But then I think rather than use McCausland, I think they tried to go through Matondo, but it just wasn't happening for him. Yeah. Which again, yeah, I, I'll, 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 I'll give Atkinson some credit because I'd be I'd be quick to slag him. So yeah. do you know what? It swings and roundabouts. I thought he was. Good. Um, it, it, it was he was he was decent. He was yeah. he was fine. Um, um, right, the last thing in the first half, Benny wins the ball and plays it to Shankland, but he just dallies on the ball and loses out to Cantwell who breaks forward, who finds, as you mentioned, Matondo. But his effort, as we were just mentioning, is deflected at the last second by Atkinson, who puts it out for a corner. They don't do anything from the corner. It's half-time. We're 1-0 down. But we've Still actually been game. 
creating chances, as you say, still in the game. I was thinking, fuck's sake, we've had a terrible opening 10 minutes, but we've actually been all right for the remaining 35. Yeah, again, just worried that the start would ultimately ultimately cost us. Um, I I was kind of hoping for what then happened in the yeah. uh, in in the second half that Naismith would obviously shove a couple rockets up some bums and uh, try try and encourage the squad that you know what we're we're still firmly in this. All it takes is a goal, and given the way that Rangers have been performing, the results that they'd accrued. Uh, in the week, kind of leading up to the game, um, I always got the feeling that the fans might turn mm -hmm. if we could yeah. conjure something and make something happen because there's a lot of discontent, um, a lot of angry Rangers fans that have been slewing various members of the playing squad that have been there for countless years. I, I wanted to talk about that as well, actually. Stephen Naismith's pre-match presser Mm -hmm. Was an interesting one. Um, I know that I know that you're going to say that you don't give a shit what managers say. That's not what I was going to say. G given what I'm studying, I do. What I was going to say I, was I pick up on these things. What I was going to say was, or what you're studying, it was clickbaited to fuck by loads of journalists. Uh, uh, undoubtedly, uh, sad, sadly, McIver, it's a it's a clickbaited yeah. world that, that we live in. That was um, the thing. I saw clicks. the headline. Well, look at the look at the clowns that are on. Sky, I mean, you turn on Saturday Social on Sky Sports, you've got Thogden and various other YouTubers that, I'm not being funny, haven't studied sports journalism for a day in their lives. And then likewise, um, you've got fucking idiots like former players who know fuck all about modern football, but just go, well, why isn't he hitting them hard, aka Roy Keane? Just going, and, fuck and off, got, like... And then you've got clowns that try and get into this world and can't get the jobs because other clowns yeah. are taking up taking up the roles. Um, the clowny clown, -y clown um, world, basically. Available for hire shortly for yeah. on Friday. Um, <laughs> but you... Good. Using the episode that will get the most <laughs> listens. To, I, I, I respect that massively. It, 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 anybody's out there, uh, yeah. feel free to give me a call. I saw Naismith, the headline of what Naismith said and everything going, Naismith doesn't think Rangers are good and can win. And yeah. I was like... Fucking hell, what's he said? But I actually think what he said was pretty sensible, where he was asked, is it unexpected? And he went, it might be unexpected, but I don't think it's surprising. And he just spoke about the fact that it's a young team with a new manager in transition. He's speaking as someone from experience of in the club, and he doesn't think that right now he can't. I think he literally says, though, they will probably go on to win several things. But that uh, yeah, got me. I, I, do, I do think it was misconstrued. I, I think he's trying to G up our boys and give them belief that they can get the get the result. Yeah. I, I, I just think that people from a Rangers perspective, I don't know if I can include Philippe Clement and the playing squad within that, have probably misconstrued what he's trying to say. I, yeah, I, probably. I, had a, I had a couple of messages from boys that I work with and mates of mine that sport Rangers just going, well, that's Philippe Clement's team talk sorted for Sunday. And by, by an instance, I agree. But simultaneously, I think, what what's he really supposed to say? Yeah. Like, he, he's damned if he does and he's damned if he doesn't. If I, I we think... win, people are like, it's a Ferguson-level mind game. It's genius. Right. That, that was perfectly executed, could not have gone any better. Yeah. The only annoyance is, because we haven't got the result, it's then brought back up. Focus, so we'll then focus on it, I... I I, I I feel for Naismith because ultimately he can't win with, what, with with whatever he said. Um, yeah, but I just feel as though people misinterpreted it by saying yep. that. Oh well, that's that's Rangers. You know, they'll be motivated as anything to win that. Yeah, it, if you're playing for Rangers, you don't really need that motivation. Yeah, I don't think Philippe Clement will have mentioned win. it once. <laughs> no, no, I think he's. I think what Stephen Naismith is trying to do with that pretty much presser is try and level the playing field as much as they can and have us believing that we can do it, then his frustration must be, obviously, the game plan's gone yeah. early doors. But in saying that, we didn't throw in the towel. And like like you said, in the second half, we, we started to try and make things happen, albeit our decision-making and just things that we want to come off didn't quite materialise.
And the pinnacle of that was in the first five oh. minutes of the second half. Our biggest chance, John Suter is pissing about with the ball and Kenny mm. Vargas, showing that energy that you mentioned, nicks it off John Suter and you're thinking, this We're is in. it. We're in. And as you can it see... It was right in front of me as well. I'm thinking, I'm going to get arrested. Yep. I'm thinking, I'm going to sprint down these stairs, get on that pitch and I'm going to be lifted. Whereas I'm on the other side behind the other corner flag going, Alan Forrest is in the box. Just <laughs> find him. Vargas drives forward, but he delays. Then he delays again. He doesn't shoot. He doesn't pass until it's a bit too late. He then passes across the face of the box. Aww. And it's cleared by Rangers. The pinnacle of a young talent who's so raw and doesn't quite have the decision making yet. <laughs> and probably feels the weight of the world on his shoulders yep. in front of the thousands of Hearts fans who have forked out their hard air and made the trip through from Edinburgh and are gagging for us to get to a Scottish Cup final and hopefully go on to win it. It's just it's so, so annoying. Yeah. Watch it. You know, I was saying that we'll probably beat Rangers in that last game of the season. Watch mm. him net the winner. As I well. know. Absolutely. It would not, would not surprise me one bit. Um, um, we then maintained so that annoying. though we maintained it because two minutes later Grant swings in a free kick that's chested down by Shankland but it's cleared out for a corner which the ensuing corner is worked to the edge of the box by Devlin who digs a ball at the back post to find Shankland but Butland ends up collecting oh my god I, I was literally jumping around like a shrieking schoolgirl, being like just come on yeah exactly I'm thinking please just somebody bury one yeah uh, but it just it, the, the penny's got to drop, and sadly, it just it, it didn't. No matter what we tried, five minutes later, Forrest does really well. He nicked the ball and pushed forward. It ends up at Vargas again on the edge of the box, but oh. instead of shooting, he takes a touch inside, passes it to Shankland on the penalty spot, but he can't get the ball out of his feet, and it's cleared. And there was this kind of first twenty-five minutes of just sustained Hearts pressure, but every one of our forwards not being at it. We were huffing and puffing, but not blowing the house down. Yes. Um, yeah, really, really irritating when you've got the most prolific marksman in the country. And how, how deep was Lauren Shankland at points as I know, well? I know, I know. I thought he had a so really bad annoying. game as well. Like, So did I, and I'm glad that you said that, because there was an instance, I think, I think he was digging out Barry Mackay in the second half, and Shankland loses the rag with him. And I'm thinking, what really more could Barry yeah. Mackay have Barry done? Barry Mackay made the run for him. Yes. And Shine Cohen just held onto it and then didn't play it and lost it. And then he it. turns I remember exactly and you that. just see him yeah. throw up the elbow as if to say, what the fuck was that? I remember I'm thinking, that. What the fuck was that from you? Yeah, I got so annoyed at him in that moment. I was like, and shut I, the fuck up. And then I'm listening to people on our bus back. And they're talking about how Shanklin was starved of service. I don't think Shanklin helped his cause. No, he didn't. He didn't at all. He was really bad. And it it kill it kills me to say that because I yeah of course I, yeah, I don't like... love Lauren Shanklin. But I think I just think sometimes we're selective in what we see and what we opt to see. Yeah, we it's as though Lauren Shanklin cannot be criticised because of and I. I understand it, the ridiculous season that he's having. Yeah. I'd be the first to nominate him for, you know, player of the year in Scotland. I think he'd be a worthy winner. Yeah. But, but he can't even perform every week. Yeah. And it's I, okay I, to criticise him when he does have a bad game. I'm not expecting him to perform every week. If he performed every week, he would not be at hearts. I can't yeah. stress this enough. But again, that, that does not mean that he's totally exempt from criticism. I just... I, I, it's, I was infuriated... Off the park as I was on the park Sunday. Yeah. What promised to be a magnificent day, the possibility of Hearts reaching yet another Scottish Cup final, eliminating one of Glasgow's big two in the process to register our first win over them in however many years. And it just anything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. My my morning and afternoon was effectively set by my first pint in the pub being served by a bloke wearing a Rangers top. You sent me that picture, and I, sh I was just like, that's that a bad omen. That is nothing open. short of a disgrace. Yeah. And Sai will be listening to this from the Royal Hotel in Ferrycook. I hope Denzel has shown his jotter, Sai, for that. A Shocking. disgrace. And he uh, said that he covered hearts, because then it was a win-win. You either win's the money, or Rangers are through. 
disgrace. Shocking. Poor etiquette behaviour. Um, speaking about Shankland having an off day, in the 73rd minute, Mackay crosses a ball in. It's headed out to Oda, whose shot is defected out for a corner. From that corner, Shankland eventually heads into the side netting. A large percentage of the Hearts fan base thinks it's in and celebrate. However, because I was facing it, you could see immediately that he missed it. And then not even five minutes later, Macaulay Tate, the substitute, drives forward to the ball on the halfway line. However, he loses it in the middle of the park. It ends up at the feet of Todd Cantwell, who runs from the halfway line to our penalty spot. So Dessers easily. gets the ball. His shot is actually well saved by Gordon, who had nothing to do in this half up until this point. However, yeah. it's deflected back out to Dessers, who takes a touch. Puts it into the far left-hand corner. 78th minute. The game's dead. Now, this is probably the time where I want to speak about the reaction to this game. Because after this, the only two other highlights were Fabio Silva does a really embarrassing dive, which was that. mental. I was, get, I was getting my carry out. Which was mental. And then Oda has a really good effort, saved very well by Butland. I, I heard that Oda should score. I think it's a very good save. I thought uh, it as it happened, and then I've seen it back, and I'm like, I think it's a very good save. I've not seen it back. I, I needed some bevy to get me through the, the bus ride home. So, it's done. We're not getting through the Scottish Cup final. The reaction from a lot of people, I think, is was very over the top. Every Hearts fan was disappointed, was annoyed, was like, how many fucking times are we going to feel like this coming out of this stadium against this opposition? But... 19 in total, I think it is. Yes, I think it... No, I think that was the 20th. I think that was the 20th, yeah. Drew won, lost 19. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Some start. That is an embarrassment. Um, But some of the reaction... I think our best players in the day were Frankie Kent. Both the right backs covered themselves in glory, fair enough. I thought Devlin was arguably our best player. I thought he was filled with energy and was throwing himself in everything. I think Benny is really poor at this goal, right? When you watch it back, it looks like he is like filming Cantwell because he's staying really close to him but doesn't want to interfere in play. And it's really poor. However, I felt generally on the day, Benny was also one of our best players. But again, my Congolese king was really starting to do my tattooing. That's fair. Because if he was going to stay, he would have signed something by now. Oh, he's not staying. He's away. He's definitely away. away. He's definitely away. But... Which, again, like... You're happy to play him, and I get that Callum Newenhoff's out. Yeah. But Alex Cochran seems a bit double standards to me. Yeah, agreed. I don't know. I'm not in the dressing room. I, yeah. I can't comment on that. Macaulay Tate's obviously in tears at the end of the game. Shanklin's making sure he's all right. Gordon goes up to him, make sure he's all right. The reaction from some Hearts fans after the game was as if we need to rip up everything that we've done this season. That see, with a real what I really disagreed with was the narrative that we didn't turn up. I saw so many Hearts fans be like, "The fans turned up. Shame about the players." I'm like, not as annoying, I... not as annoying as Celtic fans claiming that it was yet another lie down. Oh yeah, that exactly. Crazy narrative that does my head. Yeah, up. it would. That is so dependent on the fact that just our forwards won the at it. Because if we take some of the chances, you go, oh, it's like Aberdeen, we gave it a right yeah. good go and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, fair play. I we just disagree. let down by decision making. Yeah, and, exactly. And a, a, a cutting edge in the final third. Why which again can't, is baffling because, like I say, we've got such a good forward line this season. Yeah. But why can't that just be the reaction? Why can't the reaction be, fuck's sake, that's a real missed opportunity? That's so annoying. But. It's because of X, Y, and Z. It's not yeah. that, oh, we need to now fucking... Everyone's like, Devlin's clearly not good enough. I, So-and-so's clearly not good enough, I, blah, blah, blah. I am the former. I felt like the latter, but I am the former. Um, and I think... can't remember what I was going to say there. <laughs> I can't remember what I was going <laughs> to say. That's fair, because I've still got this point. Because no, I... Go on. So many times, we often speak about how hearts are just like, we lose a game. And it's like, right, well, Naismith's under pressure now. It's like, this season has been one of, statistically, the most 
successful seasons of our lifetime in terms of points won, goals scored, goals Vegas conceded, records being broken, various records, score, getting six points against Celtic, stuff like that, like unbeaten in derbies. Celtic. Yeah, exactly. Like categorically been a successful season. Anyone who says otherwise is just categorically wrong. It's like, no, no, no. This has been a great season. It doesn't matter what happens in these next five games. We've got third. It doesn't matter. I've seen some people be like, oh yeah, but what if we like limp over the line? Couldn't they give a fuck if we limp over the I line? We probably will, to be honest. You know what our record's like? We'll we'll split. Split. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, I don't give a shit. If someone said to me this time last year when we were having an interim manager who had never coached before. <laughs> yeah, before Naismith took the reins. You'd be yeah, going, oh. going, oh, by the way, I know you've just thrown away third in like really embarrassing circumstances, but if you stick with this guy, you'll get third at an absolute canter and have a striker about to score 30 goals a season. Every Hearts fan would have been like, sorry, did we appoint Klopp or something? What's <laughs> happened? <laughs> like, this has been such a successful season. Sunday was a massive disappointment. And you can be frustrated and angry at that and go, right, yeah, as you said earlier, spit all danda. You can see where they fit into the team and Definitely. fix part of our issues. But you just go, yeah, yeah, we're still on a project. We've got the second youngest squad in the league. We've got the most inexperienced manager in the league. Like, we're building something. If this is the bedrock of the project, fucking hell, how successful is this project going to be? Probably better than anything I could have said. So yeah, well, well, well said. That. Um, yeah, I, you know what? You know what? For like, it's just I feel like again, like that's what I was going to say. So I think heart sport is great, and I I would never never slag off the fans because what our fans have done for this football club is nothing short of remarkable. Really, what I do believe is that. Trips to Hamden brings out the very worst of our support. Yeah, that's totally fair. Simultaneously, I thought the Gorgi Ultras were magnificent. Well, the atmosphere Sunday. was class. It was brilliant. It was booming. They never stopped back in the team, yep. regardless of the scoreline. The shit start we got off to, they were right behind hearts from the moment that game kicked off until it ended. But... There's lots of people that are wanting to make a weekend of it. Or rather, mm -hmm. just make, make the day of it. Yeah. There's lots of people in the stands that will have had too much to drink. Yeah. They'll have had some other substances. Yeah. I'm not going to touch on that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every single time I watch Hearts at Hamden, and this has been a theme of our support for maybe, I, I would argue since the League Cup final against St Mirren in 2013. 2013, yeah. Every single time we've gone to Hamden, there's been scraps in the heart's end. For whatever reason. I right at the start of the game, what the fuck was that? Right? I forgot but, about that. Literally the section next to the ultras, I was watching it. and Because I, I was the other side, obviously, as you said. Mm -hmm. So you, you'd have been closer to it than I was. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, the game's not even kicked off yet. Yeah, it was my... Why, when they were coming could, out. What could you possibly be so enraged about? Yeah. Is it the sun that you've not packed your shades? Yeah. <laughs> Are you wearing trousers that are too long and you've not packed your shorts? I'm thinking, like, and it just puts we guys off. Aye. Little young fans that we're wanting to encourage back. Hearts are looking to build a fan base that carries on through generations. There was a brilliant banner I saw behind me, and it was just something simple. A, a maroon and white banner with a dad carrying a young boy. I saw that. That was great. Yeah. That was a great banner. I, I got a photo of it and I was going to send it to my dad, but then I, I turned and I see these scraps kicking off. And I just think to myself, that would just put little guys off going. Yeah, totally. It would. It, it's, it's it's on the verge of putting me off going. I'm thinking, what's the point? Well, You're I hate going to away games. I hate it because it's but, just that type of situation. But the, the rarity, the, 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 like, the specialty of the occasion, a Scottish Cup semi-final, you know, think of all the professional clubs. There's 42 professional clubs in our league pyramid. Yep. We are one of four that will experience n n something that nobody, like, none of the other 38 will. And I'm thinking, you are ruining the experience for our younger fans because you can't behave, because you've had too much to drink, because you've been doing whatever else you've been doing, and you can't put that aside for ninety minutes yeah. to get behind and and show 
it shows Scotland that we are one of the most passionate fan bases, that we never stop back in the team, that we love Hearts, we do anything to see Hearts prosper and Hearts win. And you can't even like sacrifice an afternoon. It's pathetic. It's embarrassing. And I don't know what the solution is, but either behave or just don't bother turning up. Yeah. Very well said. And hopefully the support is well behaved this weekend as we travel to Rugby Park to try Let's and... see how many of the day trippers go then. Yeah. I'm gone. I'm there. Yeah. Good man. Um, to try and see if we can secure third officially, get this five million pound plus war chest for next season, and get European group stage football. However, as I say, we're traveling Kilmarnock, a team who have been very successful this season. However, we're particularly at home. Yes, However, p- particularly at home. However, not necessarily against us. They were all, all of them, the entire team. Not a single player were surprisingly omitted. From the PFA Scottish Premiership Team of the Year. Yeah. And we just thought we'd quickly mention it. We've got a representative. I'm sure you can all guess who it is. Can we all just calm down when these lists... Like, this This again blows my mind. This is the players selecting who their best opponents have been this season. Yeah. It also shows how the fucking players. stupid players are. It it does not, you know how there's like but this kind of again. I don't know if it's recency bias. I don't think or, it's recency bias. I, I think it's going. I just oh, don't well, feel we're as, the old firm. Well, that's what I was going to say. I feel as though the old firm's votes don't carry in this instance. This is perhaps the one survey where the old firm, the old firm's representatives are secondary because you think about the other ten teams. Chances are they're gonna select an old firm player. If you see what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. I just think like there's obviously throughout our lifetime, we grew up in a time where footballers were not thought of as the most intelligent, shall we say. However, in recent years, that narrative at the top levels began to shift with Marcus Rashford's societal situations, uh, people like Jude Bellingham carries himself Saka. We trust Saka being really community based and stuff like that. I think the PFA kind of goes, ah now we've still got a long way to go. Because <laughs> The eleven. Get on to Craig a... Beatty. I see he's their. Uh, is he their communications officer? Really? Yeah. I didn't like even he, know that. He's working for the PFA. So, fuck's sake, get on, Beats. Get on to Big Beats about it. <laughs> it was a four-three-three lineup. Jack Butland in goals. A back four of James Tavenier at right back. Double pivot in centre half because they like to be really progressive with the ball. Cameron <laughs> Carter Vickers and Liam Scales left back Owen Beck. Three in midfield of Matt O'Reilly and Callum McGregor with John Lundstrom joining them. And then the front three, three strikers instead of a striker and two wingers, Bojan Majofsky, Theo Bayer, and our very own Lawrence Shankland. Now, as I say, I think it's crazy that there's not a single Kilmarnock player in that team considering the season they've had. Danny Armstrong has been robbed. Mental. I think it's insane. I think it's crazy Luke McCowan isn't in that. Strongly agree. I, because I, he's I, been amazing. You could name any of the Dundee midfielders, really, but he's probably yeah. the one that's head and shoulders above the rest yet. I don't understand how Frankie Kent hasn't made it in. Frankie Kent, or even you, you mentioned Kelly Lewis Mayo's been fantastic. Yeah, Lewis Mayo's been a fan, Rob, amazing for them. Robbie Dees has had limited game time, but I, I like Big Dees. Yeah. Stuart Finlay, they're hoping to get back on a permanent deal. Yeah. Um, crazy, I agree with you, but, by the way, in the general sense where it's like, this isn't the team to like read into. It's just like, all no, right, okay, that's what they think. It's just it's personal opinion. I mean, yeah. players players could also view the circumstance. I mean, if Theo Bear tore me a new arsenal and scored a hat trick for Motherwell back in Man Mark Cyril Dessers out a 90 minute game, of course I'm gonna pick Theo Bear over. Cyril I'm Dessers. buzzing by the way that Bear is in this team. I think that's class. Oh, it deserves it. Because who would have said this this time last year? Uh, well, exactly. One goal for St Johnston, and I think he equaled that tally on the opening day. For yeah, on his day. Like, <laughs> Dundee, I think, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, some story, and I see he's been drafted in the, the Canada squad as well. Yeah, he has. Um, but he Fair point, him. Yeah. Uh, listen, that just goes to show that a particular environment, a particular club, a particular support, maybe. He um, said it's K- down to K- Kettlewell. K- K- he, was like, manager, he was like, Kettlewell spoke to me. In a way that no coach has ever spoken before. He was like, he's just really simplified the game for me and just said to do very basic things and it's working. There you go. 
Um, uh, yeah, the, the back four I find strange. I mean, Cameron back four's Vickers has played 12 90 minute games yeah, exactly. this season. How, I mean, is this, you know, Beckenbauer that we're coming up against? Yeah. Who, who's the other set half scales? Yeah, Liam Scales. The guy completely me, but... at fault for two of Aberdeen's three goals. But do you know what? It's, like Celtic have fought to big money on Navrotsky and Lagabielka and he's keeping them out yeah. of the team, so there must be a reason for that. The the left back on Beck. I I think Cochrane. Just because Plus, of I think it's just Alex because... Cochrane's played one more game, but again, yeah. neither have really I, d- I don't mind so Owen Beck being in it. there, especially because he's the only Dundee representative. So I'm like, right, good. Dundee was at least yeah, Dundee represented Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and to be fair, I think yeah, the whole situation surrounding his deal, Klopp playing him in the Premier League for Liverpool, yeah. so that Celtic or Rangers couldn't then snap him up. That deserves recognition from me. Big fan yeah. of that. Um, I like going, but I also think Owen Beck is class. <laughs> like, oh, he's very good. He's, he's, he's very, very good. good. Yeah. I, I, it's only a matter of time before one of Glasgow's big two probably snap them up. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think elsewhere in the team, I mean, Miofsky, okay, but again, it's hit a wee bit of a dry spell recently, hasn't he? So he is the only reason Aberdeen are on the bottom of the league. <laughs> oh, by a million miles. He yeah. single handedly kept them in the league. I really hope they cash in on him this summer because it'll be interesting to see how they try and replace him. Um, but yes, uh, I think other than that, what, who is the midfield? The, McGregor, the, O'Reilly and... McGregor, O'Reilly and Lundstrom. I would have had McCowan over. I th- Matt O'Reilly started so strongly. Yeah, but I thought he, he, really he looked played... like the outstanding player of the year yeah. up until... Uh, coincidentally, when Shanklin started hitting form, Matt yeah, O'Reilly he fell off. away. Yeah. Callum McGregor's had a wee spell out injured. I, I found it mental as well. that The trio of Hatati, O'Reilly and McGregor obviously started in the cup semi-final over Aberdeen. That was the first time since the end of October yeah, that that team started together. Yeah. So that tells you that, obviously, McGregor has been, Hatati has been, whoever. O'Reilly, yeah, I'd go along with. I'd probably go O'Reilly, McCowan, and I was going to maybe shoehorn Danny Armstrong in there. I know he's not. Yeah, the field, but um, just to have him represent, yeah. can we need somebody? Yeah. And he's probably. Been I mean, a, a we've got a man. front three of Lawrence Shanklin, Bojan Mioski, and Theo Bear. Like, we can have Danny Armstrong uh, in the midfield. Yeah, so I, yeah, I'd go with that trio then, probably. Yeah, that's very fair. However, again, players pick it. It's not yeah. up to me. No, no point in greeting over it. We, we need what, to. What I will be greeting over is if Lawrence Shanklin does not win the player of the year, because yes. it will be an absolute disgrace if that is not the case. Chris Boyd said it should be Tav in the year, and it's like, I just can't be asked. Do me a favor. We need to be worried about Danny Armstrong, Lewis Mayo, Very all good. these varieties that didn't make it into the PFA team of the year. Kelly this weekend, there's been talk on Twitter about if this is our most lucrative game in our lifetimes, potentially ever. Joel Sked said that the only other one that probably comes close is 2006 when we played AK Athens to get in the Champions League. That is the only similar one. And this is far more lucrative than it was even two seasons ago. Because of the five million that we got, a, a reasonably high six figure, a eh, seven figure sum, sorry, was spent on making sure Tynecastle was ready for European facilities oh and God, games. I thought you were going to say the hotel there for a second. No, no. <laughs> uh, stuff like VR was coming in that summer, so that had to be installed. The lights had to be brought in and all that kind of power. Apparently, seven figures oh, the roughly. Bill, the billboards, the electric billboards. Yeah. Like all that kind of patter was brought in. However, screens. this time, oh god, yes, screens. I forgot that was that 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 was that season. So this season, we just get to. I mean, Amber just said she's not building a war chest. She's spending it on the transfer market this summer. So an incredibly lucrative game. One I am going to just because I want to say I was there. If we do win, but you do not seem confident that we will win. No, I don't. I think it's got one each draw written all over it. To be honest with you. I'd take um, that, to be honest. Yeah, I think we both said that we'll secure it against Dundee. Yeah. Uh, be nice to secure it this weekend. But be class. But that then kind of is our season. I was about to say, then you've games. got four games that just yeah. have to happen. Again, like, I hate the split so much. I hate the split so it's much It's so well. tin pot. Yeah, it's shite. No other major league splits in half. No. Nah. Or sees teams play each other four times a season. Uh, but if you want my thoughts on the pyramid structure, then feel free to look at my Twitter. 
I was about to say, you, you've got an entire documentary based around the bottom of that pyramid, so go and really watch angry. that. And, then, and instead, it's actually the pyramid's being helped from the bottom up rather than the yeah, top. Yeah, the top. It's so great. you're going with one all. Who is your goal scorer? I am. Uh... <laughs> Quite funny if it was Vargas after yeah. I slew them for his weekend performance. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that. Vargas, why not? You? I'm going 2-1, Shankland and Vargas to get the winner. Nice. It would have been boring had I said Shankland, so I'll, go, I'll yeah, go with Vargas. That's fair. So, before we finish, we have the quiz, which oh, great. I've just realised a lot of it is based around Hearts versus Rangers stats. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so it's quite be horrendous. So it's going to be interesting. As ever, we've got a true or false, a multiple choice, two normal questions, and the who am I? We start... Oh, with the true or false. Oh, God. True or false. Hearts have only won one game against Rangers in the last 14 attempts in all competitions. False. Correct, because we've won none. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That, 14. That takes us to just after COVID, where we have drawn two and lost 12. Bloody hell. That yep. is a disgrace. Well, the, the two draws, one at Ibrox. Yep. But both at Ibrox. Both at Ibrox. Two each and one, two each yeah. And one each. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, continuing on that trip. However, one for one, starting off strong. Great. Well, then. I'm, thr I'm thrilled. Multiple choice. In those 14 games, oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> how, how many goals have Rangers scored? Is it A, 34? Is it B, 36? Is it th C, 38? Or is it D, the big 4 0? This is where I, I could have tapped up uh, Scott, aka Hart's stats, who yep. I stood next to actually. Uh, oh, were you? Ahead of the game, I. I didn't. I didn't fancy my seat, so I was just moving from seat to seat till somebody fair. came and was like, "Move out of the way." Um, so I got a wee chat with Scott. It was nice. nice to see him. Oh yeah. By the way, um, we'll see now. A few folk came up to you. A few folk came up to me. Yeah. Just saying nice things about the podcast. So yeah, I was walking down the steps. To anyone and I who said, was. Oh, it's it, great work with the podcast. Keep it going. I was like, "Oh, thanks very much." Thank and you so it, much to everybody say. who came up to us. It was one of the few highlights of that day. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Um. <laughs> As to regards to this question, this is something that should not be considered a highlight. No. Um, 38. Oh, you're two off. 40. 36. It's not oh, as bad as nice. you thought. <laughs> <laughs> what a prize that is. Yeah. So, question three. 36 goals in, what, 14 games? Yeah. And considering we've had two five nils in there, that would leave 26 and 12. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. For contrast, in the last 14 games against Celtic, oh, how geez. many times have Hearts <laughs> won? Uh, well, the two this season. Prior to that, I think our last win was Big Angie's first game in charge. What a night that was. That was my. That was class. I was one of the five thousand somehow lucky in the yeah, ballot. Yeah. What a night! Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's in the last fourteen. So hold games. on a second. You said before COVID. I'm going to go with three then, on the basis that that would have been our first game back up. Oh no! But the, oh. yeah, no, because the, the cup finals. Yeah, I'm going to say three. You're spot on. Three yeah. is correct. Yes, and they are the three that you <laughs> mentioned, obviously. Because, yes, yeah. we did play them during COVID in the off-season. That was the cup final. Cup final, which we got beat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you be, you've unintentionally gave me that. Yeah. That was decent, decent logic, to be fair. Thanks. As I said, Hearts travel at Kilmarnock this weekend in one of the most financially lucrative games in recent history. But how many goals have Hearts scored at Rugby Park this season? Well, we won one nil with the goal that never was, like the own <laughs> goal. We won two one in the cup with Grant and Lowry. Did we go earlier on in the season than that? 
No, because we drew nil nil at Tynecastle and one one at Tynecastle. The other league meeting finished nil one. So three. He's got it again with three. Nice. Three is the answer to both questions. Yes, and they are the exact goals that you mentioned as well. So you've done three or four. You've yes, done well in the quiz. Right. I obviously didn't study our record against Rangers because why would I want to depress myself? <laughs> I only saw it because that um, Agent Scotland, or whatever the name is, put it out, did that as like a big tweet, and I was like, right, I'm using that, even though it's shite. <laughs> I hate it, but uh, it's good quiz. Even, quiz. even though it's shite, it's content. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. So, three out of four, on to the who am I? Are you All ready? Right. I'm I'm happy with my performance. I'd like to get yeah. who am I, but I'm happy with my performance. So, I have exclusively played in Scotland. I hate these sort of questions. When making my heart's debut, I came on in a position that I never played in again for the club. Oh, Jesus. At the time of my debut, I became the youngest player to play in a game in the SPFL's history. Oh, in wow. my career... I've played over 100 games for two of my clubs. And my first goal for Hearts came against our se Scottish Cup semi-final opponents. Who am I? Ooh. Wow. It's an interesting one. I've got this man's Wikipedia page up now. That is an interesting one. I, immediately, I'm drawn towards Scott Robinson because I believe... Is it, he's, he might still be the youngest player to ever play for Hearts. I think Harry Calkins the youngest goal scorer. Right. But Scott Robinson might be our youngest ever appearance holder. Is that right? I, I'm shit with stuff like that, unfortunately. I... I would have guessed Finlay Pollock, but I think Finlay was a bit older than Cochrane, actually. I might be wrong. But then he scored. Oh, yeah, we finally did. He not score against Sterling Albion in the League Cup. Am I right in saying that group group stage game? Fucking hell! You're testing me now. I can't mind. Hey, uh, right, okay. Let's. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask for clubs in order. I think. I think that would help somewhat. Let's go. Let's go with that. Hutchie Vale. Oh Jesus! Heart of Midlothian. Come on. Mm -hmm. Why won't it load? Dunfermline. It's, we've got it loaded. <laughs> East Fife. Mm -hmm. Livingston. Mm -hmm. Kilmarnock. And then it says, it has that weird thing on Wikipedia where it just goes, omission. And then after that, I don't know what the fuck that is, after that it has Partick Thistle. That does match up the score Robinsons, I think. I don't know what omission means. Yeah, because Kelly, he is, he, yeah, he does play for Thistle, I think. What else can I ask? You want the clues again? No, because I, 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 I do think it's him, but I'm trying to not talk myself out of it. <laughs> <clears throat> Would I be right in saying that this player was an unused substitute on the 19th of May 2012? Um, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> no, incorrect. Incorrect. The clubs, the clubs seem to match up, but East Fife. Dunfermline. I don't remember him with Dunfermline though. But Livy makes sense because he was there last year. He's definitely played for Kelly. Thistle. Yeah, I, I, I think it is Scott Robinson, isn't it? Is that your final guess? I'm going with it. You gave me an easy one with Osmond so, so I was like, I'll give you East Scotty Robinson. <laughs> Correct. You nearly fucked yourself there because Robinson did come on. Oh, did he? Yeah, he came on for the last five minutes. Wow. I would never have said that. He replaced Ian Black. Makes sense. Kevin yeah. West and Novation. That was his best game for Hearts by a million miles, Ian Black. So, to explain the clues, I've exclusively played in Scotland. That makes sense. Uh, when making my Hearts debut, I was playing in a position I never played in the game for the club. It came on up front oh, <laughs> against wow. Inverness in the, on the 26th of April, 2008. 
Jesus. Uh, where it would have oh been... Oh, my God, I feel old. He would have been 16 years old, one month and 14 days. So, so 2008, was, what, 16 years ago? So what, is, is he only 31, 32? 32. He just turned 32 last month. Bloody hell. Yep, Feels that's like depressing, isn't it? Yonks. Yep. Jesus. Uh, at the time of my debut, I became the youngest player in SPFL history. In my career, I've played over 100 games for two of my clubs. For us, he made uh, 115 appearances. And for Libby, really? Yep. Oh, wow. 115 games. I mean, uh, not have thought they'd played 115 times for Hearts. And for Livingston, Livingston, oh, 114. Wow. So we are the team oh, wow. that he has played most for by a game. Bloody hell. How uh, many has he, he played for Kelly? Yeah, I can tell you that right now. Hold on. Is he our youngest ever appearance holder? Right? Yeah. Seen that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Scott Robinson for Kilmarnock. You can know that you didn't know that, you bass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he played 52 times for Kilmarnock. Wow, that all. Bloody so hell. 115 for us, 114 for Livingston, 52 for Kelly, 32 for East Fife, 26 at Partick, who he is correctly currently still yeah. at, and he played twice for Dunfermline. Oh, there you go. That's why I don't remember it. Um, wow, I'd have thought he'd have had more more Kelly and less Livy appearances. Yeah, so would I. I think I'm more at Kelly so than Marnock I do at Livy. Yeah. Uh, his first goal came against Rangers uh, in a one-all draw on the 23rd of January 2010. So just oh, when yeah. we were in that I run of just like well. smashing it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he a made one, fourteen one old draw. What at Tynecastle? At Ibrox. His first goal for Hearts was at Ibrox. Wow. Yep. Uh, did we go one 0 up? No, we didn't. We were one. Oh fuck me! The most heart of Midlothian thing ever. We go one 0 up through Scott Robinson. However, then the last cast equaliser in the ninety fourth minute. Oh, there's a surprise. Andrew Little. Scores uh, Andy Little. Yep, yeah. he was rubbish. Christian Nadi got sent off. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Pardon yeah, Nadi, that man. was the game where Kello saved Free Davis and Lafferty. And the, the goal was like oh, that wow. his save was save of the season against Davis and stuff like that. Bloody hell, but then, yeah, you, I, I could not have told you that Scott Robinson scored in that game. No, I, wow. I have no fucking memory of that. Jesus. Well, then again, it wasn't it yesterday, was it? No, it wasn't it at all. Wasn't it at all. But yes, you got it. Well, that four out of five in the quiz. That's you smashed that. Not bad. I'll take that, mate. Definitely. Uh, it's it's a crumb of consolation from what was an otherwise <laughs> miserable weekend. Yeah, Don't so. worry, fan base. Adam did well in the quiz. That's nice. the real. That's 80, the real quiz. Eighty percent, baby. Come on. <laughs> exactly. That's what it's all about. Please let us know how you did on the quiz as well and let us know if you did enjoy this episode, which we very much hope you did. If you did, please leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice. It massively helps us out. If you've been watching us on YouTube, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Pet to Paisley on all the socials if you want to get us on there. Pet to Paisley at gmail.com if you want to fire us over an email. Adam, where can they get you on all the socials? Uh, you can find me on all the socials watching a brief compilation of Serial Dessers goals against Hart Midlothian <laughs> in the 2023-2024 season at Adam T. Kendall uh, to depress myself. You can come along, grab a bevy and, and join me. Um, what about yourself, McIver? I am at dmcaiver 22 We'll be back next week where hopefully hearts are rolling in the money as we have secured European group stage football. But we might not have, let's be honest. However, whatever happens, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Get a bit, money, JTs!